All right, guys, welcome back to Box Mining. And this video is all about the bloodbath that is happening on the cryptocurrency markets right now. As you can see here, guys, it is just bloody across the board. Just, just devastation everywhere. Bitcoin down, Ethereum down, Binance coin down, Cardano down, anything. Basically, the whole market is tanking aggressively today. Unless, I guess, unless you're in stable coins, you're going to feel the effects of today's market. Now, 100%, the reason behind this is to do with what's happening in the Asian trading scene with this company called Evergrande. Now, the biggest fear right now is that this is or potentially going to be the next financial crisis. That is why there's so much fear in the market. And just to tell you, um, you know, I've been watching the Hang Seng and the Hong Kong stock market today. It was just tanking. It's bleeding bloody. Everyone's doing a post-mortem analysis on that. This video is more going to be focused on the crypto side. So instead of going to every part, we're going to focus on the detail. We're going to focus on what the biggest fear is. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about how this could potentially affect crypto. Sure, yes, the markets are falling today because of just the fear in investors and as they, they scramble out. But honestly, I see a different picture. I see a bigger picture here because all these investors are scrambling out of stocks, out of housing, then eventually they need to scramble also out of the dollar. And this is where I feel like crypto is going to have such a big play because the more people talk about a global financial crisis, the more the crypto community can say Bitcoin was designed for a situation like this. So yeah, I actually view this as long-term bullish and I'll just kind of conclude everything in the end of this video as well. So make sure you stick to the end. Now, obviously with videos like this, I really take a lot of effort and time to produce it. So if you guys are you know, watching this, please do take the time to smash up that like button down below. And of course, share with your friends as well. And an ending note as well, obviously I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Now, on a rare one-in-time event, we actually have a presentation to explain what is happening, what's happening with Evergrande, why is it causing this global fear, and why is it causing crypto crisis or crypto prices rather to go down. So first, let's start off with Evergrande. Evergrande has three hundred billion dollars of debt. That is a lot of money they owe people. They owe banks. They owe other businesses, and in fact, they have um, property that they haven't finished building in China. So. Yeah, it's, it's not a good situation. Now, the biggest fear is that Evergrande, they can't pay their debt. They might go bankrupt. And if that is the case, then a lot of people won't be getting the money that they are rightfully owed. So this is the kind of the biggest problem. This is the fear that's causing the markets right now is that it's not isolated to Evergrande. Right. It's more about the market wide stock market disaster that could potentially happen here. As Evergrande can't pay off their debt, other companies will also potentially fall as well. Because if they have direct dealings with Evergrande, well, got some bad news. If it goes bankrupt, that bad stuff will happen. So again, this is the worst case scenario. So just putting it out there, guys, this is the worst case scenario. This is what's causing the major fear. And there's a lot of other considerations too. So what makes the situation a little bit worse is that Evergrande is a real estate company. It deals with Chinese property and Chinese real estate sector. So now the bigger fear, the, the bigger elephant in the room is, could there be a, a real estate disaster? So for those of you who don't know about the Chinese real estate market, it is uh, pretty hyped up to say the least. So here's a few charts that I found. And it's pretty much the perfect definition of up only. It's been growing quite aggressively in the past two decades. There's a lot of kind of skeptics, critics calling it a massive bubble. And well, it never really got the chance to release steam. The Chinese government has been consistent, consistently trying to kind of curb the growth of the real estate market to kind of let off some steam. But the biggest issue here is that, well, 
that hasn't happened yet. So this is the reason why there's so much fear of a housing bubble or a housing market collapse in China. It's because, well, there's just so many new homes being built. The price of homes have been just steadily rising up and up and up. And a lot of people view it as a matter of time. And if this is the camel, if this is a black swan event, then this might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. So now to finish the um, argument, this is why fear is spreading. We have a potential real estate disaster and uh, potentially even a larger picture, a Chinese, a damaged Chinese economy. After all, real estate is 15 to 20% of the Chinese GDP, GDP, depending on how you measure it. And this could cause a global economic disaster as well. Now, if you want more on this, you look no more than YouTube because YouTube has just been packed with videos about Evergrande, without this, about this potential economic collapse. There's just so much fear spreading on both YouTube, on mainstream media. It's kind of driving me nuts. So poof, we got the fear out of the way. Let's talk about rational thought for a while and some of the key observations here. So first and foremost, I think this fear is kind of more bigger bite than it really is. There's a lot that hedges on how the Chinese government will deal with this. I mean, if we can see this, the Chinese government can see this too. And there's a huge potential for a massive bailout on the Chinese government end. So if that happens, then it might be a disaster averted. It doesn't really, the, the problem doesn't really progress beyond Evergrande and it's kind of isolated in that case. Now let's move on to the thoughts about Bitcoin too, because short term obviously is very, very bearish as investors and such as they start to fear, feel fear out of the market, they're going to just pull money out of everything, right? So if they're sensing a crash, investors just kind of pull out, sell off all their assets, their stock and potentially property. And also this might cause a cascading effect where anyone in a leveraged position, and this happens a lot in the stock trading space, if they're overly leveraged, and if they're protected up to 20, 30%, a freak event like this might cause them to be liquidated, causing further sellouts. And obviously why it impacts Bitcoin and short-term bearish is because these investors, because they're afraid, because their mentality is of fear right now, they're just blindly selling everything. We've seen the same situation happen when coronavirus hit. Remember when it was first spreading around the world and people got afraid? The first instinct that investors got was to sell. So we saw these massive sell-offs of Bitcoin in both February and March. However, after that, the investors turned very, very bullish on Bitcoin. And this is exactly what I'm watching out for. Because let's face it, at this current point, with so much fear in the market, where are investors going to go, right? No, housing, there's a fear there. Stock market, there's a fear <laughs> right there. And on top of that, US dollar, I mean, global economy, not looking so good. I mean, in terms of what governments can do right now, especially at this point, with interest rates being so low, with so much money already being printed, we're running out of options and uh, f the fear of further um, inflation is going to really hit and investors will now start to look at both precious metals and cryptocurrencies. So I actually view this as a situation where investors will eventually start to realize that they have to go somewhere and this is really positive for Bitcoin. And I just want to remind everyone that during the ancient, the previous financial crises, Bitcoin was the asset that really blew up. It was the safe haven. It was not just the safe haven, but it was the asset that moved up the most. At the end of the day, the Bitcoin, I mean, if you look at the original Bitcoin white paper, sure, it's a great way for payments, but also it's expressly designed to counteract failures in the financial system. So in other words, Bitcoin was designed for this. It was made for this. And in many ways, a lot of Bitcoin maximalists would be waiting for this event to happen. At the end of the day, Bitcoin cannot be created out of thin air. There is a limit to the number of Bitcoin. And the mining process is completely dictated by mathematics that are out of the control of politicians. And on top of this, 
Bitcoin is, can be transferred around the world. As we see tensions rise and as we see China versus this, this war between China versus US and potential limitations on how we can use currency, Bitcoin becomes the one true global currency. So thinking long term, I really feel super, super bullish right now. So now on to what I'm currently doing in terms of my strategy in this market. First to set things out, I have two kind of distinctly separate strategies. So I have a long term play, which is a dollar cost average strategy. That's strategy number one. And I have a second trading strategy that I kind of trade based on momentum of how this market is changing. The first strategy is very long term. And typically speaking, what I do is I dollar cost average by Bitcoin and then I just kind of hold it. It's pretty simple. The second one is a lot more aggressive. I almost did middle finger there, but no, the second one here is a little bit more aggressive. It is all about trying to time the market and trade according to the flow of the market. So let's start with strategy number one, what's happening there. And that is simple dollar cost average. I'm still going forward. Now I made a video yesterday right before the crash. I think you can probably see here if I just dodged my head over here, you can probably see that prices were still a little bit higher than today. And I did enter my dollar cost average. And do I regret buying yesterday as opposed to today? Obviously not. I mean, the whole point of a dollar cost averaging strategy is that I'm not looking for the best price, but I'm looking for to build up a position in those assets. So yes, absolutely. I'm continuing that dollar cost average. In fact, as markets gets cheaper and as the opportunity is better, I'm actually going to increase the amount into dollar cost averaging. Now, the another question is on my trading side, am I buying the dip right now? And uh, Unfortunately, that is a no at this current point. So I'll just give two reasons why. Now, first reason why is I feel like there could be a potential better timing right now. So the way it works, I feel like is that this is quite a big event and it will take some time for the investors and for the sphere to go out. And it could be the case that that fear could lead or future fear could lead to another major crash in especially a flash crash in cryptocurrencies. So that's what I'm kind of in the watchful mode for. So if that's happening, I don't want to take up some major positions. and I don't want to take up leverage positions at this current point of time. Now, second reason is a little bit more personal. Um, I'm in Asia right now and there's holidays coming up the next few days. So I'm going to be busy and I won't be able to access the computer 24H. And you know, again, when I'm going and pursuing a trading strategy, typically speaking, I want to be next to the computer the entire time. So in that sense, I do feel like this discount is going on. And what I'm going to do, my response to that is not to directly trade it at this current point. But rather what I'm going to do is I'm going to DCA. So I'm going to increase the amount of dollar cost averaging I'm going to do. And I'm going to increase more funds into DCA account because I feel like long term, right? If you if you look at, well, not even long term, if you look at even the medium term in crypto, we see the months of November and December coming up. And those have been months where Bitcoin really outperforms. And guys, that is what's happening. That's my take. Obviously, I really want to rush this video out. So I appreciate if you guys have any feedback so I can comment and build on this topic as well. On top of that, we have some upcoming videos about blockchain and also Jemmy's been working really hard on a video about teaching you guys how to use blockchain. And we're going to start that with um, QuickSwap. Um, so coming up quite a lot of video, quite a lot in the works. If you do want to follow what is going on, so I've been trying to challenge everyone that I see to do three YouTube shorts a day. So this is my box mining shorts channel. It's a short shorts of the shorts. So come check it out. Leave a link down below if you guys are interested in checking out the shorts. And Jemmy and Nathan are also doing shorts as well. So yeah, just check them out. I'll leave the links down below. And obviously, guys, if you guys enjoy videos like this, I, I'm staying up pretty late to make it. So make sure you destroy that like button, smash it like how the markets got smashed today. Too soon? Too soon. But anyways, guys, click that like button, click subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.